What's up guys? Welcome back to Sailing GBU. This week we are... This week we are giving out some inside scoops, some insider trade secrets, some ways to make your boat life better. When you live on the boat, things change completely. Like not only just your lifestyle, the, the hours in the day change, the days of the week change, but also little things in life change. You know, your lighting fixtures, your glasses, the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you overall live your life changes a great deal. Things that you might not have thought of. We're gonna show you the items today and you need these things on a boat. We didn't know we needed all these things, but after the time doing it, now we know, and we're gonna help you guys out. Let's do it. Oh, and it's not paid. We're not getting paid by any of these. These are just products that we love, and uh, That so, we got to use. Yeah, we bought them, we're using them, we like them, so this ain't a commercial. This is just some uh, things that I think will help you out. All right, let's get right into it. The first item I wanna show you is knives. You wanna get a ceramic set of knives because Things rust out here on the boat. Some people use salt water to clean their dishes and then later rinse them with fresh water and all that builds up a lot of rust. So we got these ceramic knives and they're really sharp. They come with these sheaths here and they're supposed to not ever rust or corrode. So let's see how sharp these babies really are. Oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the proof's in the pudding. I just did that. And I'm just a weak girl. Well, this guy looks like he might be related to Cooley, though. Hey, what's up? I'm Mr. Pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here with that. All right, I thought it was Cooley. You're juicing. All right, guys, that was so much fun. Now I'm thinking, if pirates come on the boat, will I be able to chop their arms off if they go in my hatches? So let's see. Yeah! Oh! Right in half. There goes your arms, pirates. <laughs> All right, she's been having a lot of luck slicing these vegetables perfectly in half. So I had to up the ante and I said, there's no way we'll chop this little onion in half. And since our safety with the pirates is very reliant on you being crafty and, and good at, good aim with your blade. Do you see? I cut this pepper Let's right see. down the middle. Let's see I what, got skill. Let's see what you can do with the onion. Here we go. Right. Pressure's on now. Oh! <laughs> Whip. Take two, pirates. Oh man, I just shaved it. Everybody, I just gave it a shave. <laughs> she just shaved it. She just gave it a winger, so we may not be as safe as we thought we were going to be. This smells good. We're about to have a salsa up in here, guys. Shing, shing, shing. <laughs> as you can see, these are very sharp. You want to make sure to get ceramic knives. I'll link them down below. All of the all of the things that I'm going to show you, I'm going to link something, if not the exact something similar down below to help you guys find it easier. But Ceramic knives are a must on a sailboat. They won't rust, won't corrode, and they're always gonna stay pretty sharp. You probably wanna get a, like a sharpening block. And now I have knives again because Matt used all my old ones that rusted and he used it all on fishing like a jerk off. <laughs> so the next item is a must have. When you go on a boat or you live on a boat, you wanna have people over, obviously, but you always have to invite that one jerk off that you don't really want to come to the boat and he always, always, always drops his glass because he's so drunk. He's that drunk sailor. Hi guys, thanks for inviting me out on the boat. It's been a pretty good time, yeah. That can really teach you guys a thing or two about sailing if, you, if you're ever interested. You know, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna raise a toast. Here's the real sailors really, really sailing. Here's to you guys. Woo! Oh, oh, oh. And you just wanna make sure that you can stop any broken glasses. So you gotta get yourself some plastic that look like glass wine glasses. They're unbreakable wine glasses. Sorry guys, I had to throw that guy off the boat real quick. But these glasses truly are like a miracle. The number one thing you really wanna to try to avoid on a boat is having gl broken glass either on the deck or in the cockpit. There's not much room to move. If you break your glass, you're gonna get glass in your foot. It's a disaster, it's a nightmare. So these are well worth it. All right, so the next item we have is this. 
A lot of people on their sailboats need to light up their cockpit. A lot of people have those blown up items that they can float and a lot it's like a cult favorite light. Well the same brand made a new type of light. These are solar powered string lights. It looks like this cool little case. Here's the solar power part. You can twist it open and there is your string lights. What's really cool about these is not only does it have three light settings, high, medium, and low, it also has a spotlight. So if you hang this main piece up where you need it to go, it can light up a whole big shadow. I'll show you at nighttime, when it turns nighttime, obviously, all the different lights. But it strings up, it's splash resistant, and you can, even if you don't have a boat, you can use this in your backyard. So we're going to string this up in our cockpit. One good thing about having lights in your cockpit is when you go out to have some drinks at other people's boats or at bars, you can leave your light on and then when you're wasted, you can drive your dinghy. Not, I'm not telling you to get wasted and drive your dinghy. You can waste it, drive your dinghy and you're like, oh yeah, there's my boat. And, woo, I almost forgot. Another really cool thing is not only can you use it for solar, like charge it solarly, you can also plug it in. Another great thing about this is that you can also, in your cockpit, plug your phone in. It has a USB port, so you can charge your phone, hang out, drink, do whatever you want, all outside by this one item. This next one. It's one that I'm really excited about because I like guns. Now, this is my No Cry Spotlight. This thing is really awesome. I love this thing. I'm super excited about having it because we don't have like, I don't know, any sort of like radar or depth finder or anything like that. So what we do when we're pulling in places at dark, we're gonna take this thing out and shine out in front of us so you can see crab pots. We came into Luperon. There's a ton of um, fish traps, buoys, things of that nature that people use here to catch fish. But we're excited for that. And you can see pretty far, like we shine into the mangroves that are at least a hundred yards away from us and we can see pretty well with this thing. But we'll go take this thing out tonight and we'll show you the efficacy of this thing right here. But this is one that you need. And what's really great about this too is you don't need batteries. This will charge off of your 12 volt system and we've charged it fully four or five times and it doesn't really affect the batteries. It doesn't take too much power. And then it powers up for maybe like six hours of straight usage on a full charge. So this thing's awesome. I'm excited to show you how this bad boy performs at night. Once all these boats, this thing lights it up pretty well. And this also has three speeds. Okay, the next thing I have is something I bought probably at the beginning of our journey of sailing around Key West time. Something that I thought I knew was going to be useful, but I had no idea how useful it actually was. Turns out you use a waterproof backpack every day, every single day you go somewhere. When you're bringing your laptop to land, it could rain. You can bring all your stuff in here, clothes. When you go to the beach, you can put your towels in here. You go kayaking, paddle boarding, you use this. This is just an item you'll be using all the time if you live on a boat. So if you haven't purchased one of these yet, I suggest you do. It's gonna save your life. The best part, like it doesn't look like it's gonna be that waterproof because they're just rolled up items. It's an opening, there's no zipper or anything, and then, which is good because on a boat every zipper corrodes. You roll it up, you snap it in, and then this one has like a little Velcro thing to hold that back. It has cup holders. As you can see, we've used it a lot. There's some stuff that's starting to rust, but this one has a special pocket for your cell phone. If you're in your kayak, you can still look at your location or whatnot. All right, this next one, super important. It's one that I love and one that I use all the time. This one will never let you down. And it may not look like much, but I think we've all learned in life that good things come in small packages. All right. Here it is. This is my hammock. It's a fold up bowl. It doesn't take up much room on a boat. And this is the two person one. What's really great about hammocks is they're not glued down. It's not a heavy chair that you have to carry around. This thing works pretty much anywhere. Like here. Or here. Or here. Even here. Hey, get out of my bar. Get here. <laughs>
Okay, so maybe not here with your hammock. All right, another necessity that you have to have on a sailboat if you want to catch fresh fish is lures. Our favorite is the squid skirt. We recently decided to try a cedar plug because we heard a lot of good things about them. So we're going to give that a go the next time we go sailing out in the ocean. But Matt wants to paint it. He thinks it's a good idea to paint the cedar plug. I don't think so. I think you're supposed to just leave it there. Leave a comment down below if you think he should paint it or not. I did buy three if he wants to ruin one because I think it would ruin it. Some reason about the cedar, I think the fish bite up these. All right, so we're back in the galley. Another great item I think is my Yeti cup. This thing stays insulated for hours. If you're out sailing and you want a hot cup of coffee, you're busy, it'll stay hot in here. If you want a cold drink for a long time, it stays cold in here. You got only a little bit of ice. You want that ice to last as long as you can. This is a really good item. You'll get your money's worth with this. You go to other people's boats for cruising sundowners. It's just really all around great. Okay, so Kristen was bragging about this Yeti cup. She was talking about hot soup, hot coffee, and all that nonsense, but we're sailors. Best thing about this Yeti cup is you can fit just about a whole bottle of wine in this bad boy. So when you're trying to pinch those pennies through the Exumas, if you ever go to the Azores, if you're ever in like the Mediterranean and you know, shit's getting expensive. You got a whole a whole bottle of wine right here. They don't know what this is. This could be apple juice. Sticking to the galley theme, another great item that we have is collapsible bowls. When I first moved on the boat, I brought all my bowls and all my kitchen stuff and Matt started throwing it all away because it was just everywhere. It's cluttering. And that's when I found out about collapsible bowls. These ones are really nice. I'll make sure to link these exact ones because they're cheap and they stay firm. They can collapse very well. They come with lids. So it could be Tupperware, you could put it in your cooler or your refrigerator. But the best part about these is that it can fit in small spots and the rubber is not soft. So if you pour like your soup or hot soup in there, and if you hit it the wrong way, it's not gonna collapse and pour all over your sink like a lot of the other ones. So these are a must have. This set comes with three different sizes. Small, large, and this is the medium one. All right guys, hope some of those helped you out. I wish I would have known about them when I first started. I did a lot of suffering. I think it built the man I was today though, so I'm not too mad about it. But I wish I'd known about all these things when I started. These are little things, cost effective things that are just gonna make your life so much easier. And we had a lot of fun making this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. The spotlight is probably the most important thing. We regret not having one of those way earlier on. Before you cut the lines, buy that because that's like the best thing that you could probably get. Yeah, there's so many, I've met so many sailors along our travels that are like, yeah, we don't go into any anchorages at night. And I'm like, why? You know, you have the charts, you can kind of read what's going on. And they're like, well, there's crab pots and so many unforeseen things that you can't see. But if you have that light, you can see the crab pots. There was one um, anchorage that we went into at night at Atwood Harbor in Crooked Islands. And man, that was like one of the probably the most gut-wrenching times of my life because it was a tight channel. I was too exhausted. The weather had really turned, so I kind of had to get in there. And it was pitch black dark. It was scary. Had we had that light, it would have been... Easy breezy, lemon squeezy, I think yeah. is how they say it. So yeah, those things are, are pretty important. So if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, comment below. Share it to your sailor friends. Share it to your sailor friends. And yes, Christmas is coming up. So if you saw anything on here that you think is cool, if you know somebody, if your kid's taking off, if your folks are taking off, if you know one of your coworkers says, I'm done with this job, I'm getting a boat and I'm leaving, <laughs> maybe drop them one of, these, uh, one of these gifts for Christmas, hook them up and, and uh, pay the blessing forward. And speaking of Christmas, we have a question. So our weather window is not coming. We thought it was gonna be coming sooner than later, but the winds are coming really strong right now. And since we don't have a great motor and we can't motor like a lot of the other people in the world, we are thinking about maybe flying back to America to see our family for Christmas one last time since this is such a good bay to keep our boat. There's people to watch our boat, people to feed our poor baby kitten. She's not a kitten, she's 10 years old, but she's still our baby. And it just seems like the right thing to do to go back and see our family. We haven't decided yet. 
Yeah, we're up in the air. We really want to leave. We want to get out of here, but the weather window is not opening up here for like the next 10 days. Um, it's really like a front kind of came through and it's just hawking dead out of the east. And we do have to sail. We can't really rely on our motor. Um, that's nobody's fault but our own. But we do have to sail, so we're kind of looking at it like, well, since we're already down for like the next 10 days anyway, might as well go see our folks. I haven't seen my dad. I haven't got to hug his neck in over two years. I haven't seen my mom in like a year and a half. Um, you know, you haven't seen your parents in a little while as well. So I think we might, we might do it. We might head back to the States. It'll be the, the first time. The only thing we're worried about is maybe the weather window comes and we see it on the windy uh, <laughs> Yeah, how heartbroken would I be if I was... <laughs> and we're in America. Hanging out in But Florida. you know what? You can't think like that. We should go see our family, I think. Because when we go to Puerto Rico and other locations, we don't know what kind of place there would be to keep our boat safe. And we don't go to marinas, so... Yeah, this is a good spot. It's cheap to fly. It's safe. It's We're comfortable here. I'm not going to be stressing over that, but I don't know. We're still up in the air. If you want to give us an opinion, you know, you guys sometimes know a little bit more about life than we do. If you say, <laughs> look, go see your mom and dad or screw that, go out and sail in 20 to 25 knot straight east winds, go dead against the wind, you know. Let us know below because we're on the fence. We can't, we can't make up our mind. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.